és akkor megkezdenénk a, a plenáris előadásokban a két keynote speakerünk van mára, és először az angol nyelvű nemzetközi előadót fogom kérni előadásának megtartására. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aniko Fehérvári, Vice President of HERA and representative of the institution organizing the conference. It's a pleasure to welcome you here at Ötvös Lorány University. Thank you for taking time out to participate in uh, that we hope will be a lively, engaging and informative conference. Today we have two keynote speakers. All four first uh, speakers arrived right from Finland. Uh, he is a senior researcher at Finnish Institute for Educational Research. He is uh, the editor of the Scandinavian Journal of Educational Research. He deals with higher education research of academic work assessment and quality. Jani Ursin from U.S. School. Uh, the topic uh, of his presentation is from Ivory Tower Researcher to Network Innovator. Okay, thank you very much for your kind invitation to, to ask me to come here and, and speak in your national conference. And thank you for the uh, good introduction as, as well. Um, when I received the invitation, I wondered what kind of presentation I will give you because I had the impression that the theme of the conference relates somehow to innovation, which essentially it's, it's not my topic of, of, of interest, to be honest. But then I considered that perhaps I could try to speak about the changing roles or actually identities of academics because, in a way, these... Uh, concepts of innovation really is at the core of what's happening in many higher education institutions across the globe and certainly that's true for Finland. So that's the sort of reasoning behind, behind my, my topic. But I will first start with the two quotations from the study that we've conducted. Uh, I give you some time to read it through but this first one is a sort of critical um, uh, view on what's happening in the Finnish universities and it ends on sort of longing back to these great Humboldtian times of, 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 of whatever that means. And the second quotation, it's essentially more positive. It says basically that what's happening in the university is really something that this male professor likes about its sort of uh, reality that he really thinks that everything is fine. And, and this really goes back to the fact that uh, you can say that we have two different kind of realities. Uh, some people really like what's happening in the universities, whereas other people are complaining more or less. Uh, and therefore we can say that what's happening here in the universities, and especially the changes taking place, it's, it's really led to the diversified and fragmented and blurred um, conceptions of academic identities and work. Uh, I don't know if that's true in Hungary, um, but that's certainly true in Finland. And many of these changes really are because we want to sort of redefine the relationship between the working life and the universities. Uh, and that's sort of reason for that. Uh, this perhaps also true here in Hungary, but there are lots of these managerial practices that takes place. I don't know if you know about the audits. Is it something that you have here in Hungary? Yeah, you do? I don't know if you have performance measurements. Do you have do you measure like the performance of the individuals? Okay, that's true here. Do we have rankings, hierarchies? Do you have profiles? Are institutions expected to, to have sort of profiles? In Finland, that's a big political debate that every single university has to have a profile of their own. And of course, we have harsh competi competition of funding. That's probably true here as well. 
So we are really living in a competitive world uh, in, among academics. And that's really is changing how we perceive universities as a workplace. And it's, it's really, we have more high expectations. We must be more productive as a researchers, as teachers. But we have to also demonstrate the societal impact. That's something that's new, at least in Finland. I don't know if that's true in Hungary. But we are really, even in the soft fields, like my background is in education, of course, so even we are expected to commercialize research findings. It's a very difficult job. We don't know how to do that. It's probably easier in the hard sciences, but that's difficult in the soft sciences. We are also expected to produce patterns, whatever it means in the field of education. We are really have to be aware of the IPRs. Personally, I don't even know what that is. But still, that's a sort of discourse that we have in the universities. And in some Finnish universities, especially the polytechnics, they have started to talk about the innovation pedagogy as a sort of guiding principle of how they give teaching. Uh, and they highlight the fact that really the students need to learn um, how they can be innovative. And this is something that comes really heavily from the labor markets. So all in all, we can say that being an academic, it's not just about socializing the values and norms of certain disciplines, but it's also about uh, learning these uh, new ways of perceiving academic work. And many of the pressures are really coming outside the academia. And this has really challenged our understanding of what it is of being an academic. So this is sort of the short background of my presentation, and I try to um, sort of describe to you the changes that has taken place in Finnish context in terms of academic identities in the middle of all of these changes. Um, and I base the presentation on two studies that I have conducted together with colleagues of mine. The first one is really about sort of polarized academic identities. Uh, and the second one is sort of similar, but then we focus also on agency, the concept of agency, which I will briefly uh, tell you about. But the way we perceived the concept of identity in both studies, it's really something that we feel that it's negotiated in everyday interactions. It's, it's not anything fixed, but rather it's something that we negotiate it negotiate day by day. Um, and the agency is really important in order to be engaged with one's own identity. So in this picture you can see uh, sort of that the agent, academic agency is something that it's between what's happening outside the academia and the sort of academic settings, but it sort of also associates with the academic subject which constitutes from the identity, knowledge and competencies that we have, and also the work history and experiences that we perceive. Uh, but both of these studies were really sort of small scale uh, qualitative studies. The reason for that was that we actually in Finland we have plenty of large scale surveys on the academic work and work conditions. And some of them are made by the, actually the trade unions, but they do a very good job. So we have a sort of general understanding what's happening in the academic work in Finland, but we don't have that much information of how the academics themselves feels these changes as part of their identity. So this first study that I will very briefly tell you about, we did together with the Oili Helena uh, Uli, Uli Yoki. Well, she's a sort of grand old lady in the field of academic identities in Finland, so she's really expert in these issues. So what we basically found out was that there are two sort of storylines that academics narrated, and one of them is the sort of very regressive storyline in which the whole academic work is seen very deteriorated 
and its sort of negative stance towards all the transformations that's ha happening in the universities. And that was actually the most typical storyline that we had in that, that uh, material. The second uh, storyline was the storyline of academic work in progress. It had a very positive note and the transformations in higher education were considered to be mainly positive things and it really uh, um, had the impression of optimism and high spirits. Um, but then very briefly, the individual narratives that we found under these storylines. Uh, in this regressive storyline, the first narrative we identified was the narrative of resistance, which meant that really the academics were opposing all the transformations, all the changes coming either inside the university or outside the university. So in this narrative, the resistant, resistance was the mean to cope with the changes. Uh, the narrative of loss, on the other hand, was a sort of a feeling of that we've lost everything. Uh, this is in the academic workplace that I originally came from. Now everything is lost, the old ideal, Humboldtian, whatever, it's gone forever. I don't like this place, but this is where I am at the moment. The third sort of regressive narrative we labeled as administrative work overload. And I'm sure we all are familiar with this fact that there are so many administrative duties nowadays in, inside the academia that we really can't focus on what we are expected to do, and that's research and teaching. And one way of coping with that was that we had sort of stories where people said that once I retire, then I can start doing research again. But before that, I'm completely overloaded with nonsense and something that's really not about the essence of my work. The fourth narrative was something like we labeled as job insecurity, and this was especially true for the younger colleagues, emerging researchers. They had worries about whether they will have a permanent contract with the university. They were all the time insecure about the continuation of their job, so that really made a sort of worries of, of being an academic. But it, ha it has a sort of potential to become a very progressive storyline if and when the person managed to get a permanent job contract. But it was really about worrying about the, the, the job security issues. But then more about these more positive storylines. Like I said, we had those two. And the first one was the sort of quotation that, uh, that you saw in the first slide. And we labeled that as a narrative of success meaning that the, in this narrative the academia as a workplace was considered to be excellent place to do the research and that was typical for those coming especially from the hard sciences they really felt that this current culture of measuring everything monitoring the performance is something that they really feel that that's the academia should be like the second was narrative of mobility which meant that, that in this narrative, the academia as a workplace wasn't seeing anything that's for good, but rather it was seeing something that, well, now I can work seven years in academia, but then I can work to the private sector. Uh, so it, it was considered to be just, well, job among a job, a workplace among other workplaces. Uh, and the th third narrative was a change agency which was typical for those people who were in a, well, head of the departments or teams of the faculty saying that there always has to be somebody who leads the chains. And therefore I'm in the position and I'm, I have to take care of it. It's not fun, but somebody has to do it. And this was sort of narrative in which people recognized that not everybody is happy and content with the changes taking place, but somebody has to lead the process. So, Essentially, these were conflicting uh, uh, narratives. Then this second study that we just uh, concluded was more about focusing on the, like I said, on the identity and also agency and emotions. This was very small. We only had 
eight interviews. I, I don't have time to give background why that was the case. But nonetheless, that was a very rich and thick data because these people really had long conversations on the issue. But in this study, he found out sort of balance and tensioned uh, uh, narratives of academic identities. And also a fifth one, which was really a sort of ambivalent academic. It was somewhere in the between of these two, two, two identities. Um, but in this balance identity, we identified sort of, we labeled the narratives as confident teacher and passionate researcher. And what was typical for both of these identities was that they really had a firm uh, and strong identity, whether it was a teacher identity or research identity, but they really had the impression that I know my teaching, I know how to do research, I'm good at that, no question about it. And they had very strong agency. If they wanted to do something, they normally managed to do that in these agencies. And so therefore the emotions that were described were very sort of confidence, satisfaction, enjoyment and meaningfulness. So this was a very positive picture of, of, of academic identities. Well, the second one was, of course, opposite to that. And in that narrative we labeled the, 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 the narratives we labeled as insecure teacher and inadequate researcher. And these were opposite to the previous ones. So these were really lacking competencies. There were stories and discussions about that. Actually, I don't know how to teach. I receive very bad feedback from the students and that's not good for my self-confidence. Or also that was true for the inadequate researcher saying that, well, I actually don't know much about how to do a proper research. I always get my manuscript rejected when I submit them to the journals. And actually my institution doesn't give enough support. I don't have time to focus on on, on research, I have to teach a lot and so forth. So the agency was also weak. People really didn't have any means to cope with the situation. They really didn't know how to be better teacher or be better researcher. And therefore, the emotions that they mentioned were more about insecurity, disappointment, exhaustion, and, and guilty, anxiety, and unfairness and fear. So it was sort of very negative note of, of academia. But then, like I said, not everything goes like in the book, so therefore we had sort of fifth category as well, which was sort of somewhere in between these two. And it was typical saying that, well, I have a huge motivation, for example, to do research, but I don't have time for that. I have to focus on teaching or administrative duties. And, and therefore, in a way, people were satisfied, they felt satisfaction, but it was also confusion because they, they really didn't balance all the tasks that they had in their everyday uh, 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 work days. So then we can always pose a question that if that's true, that we have a variety of identities inside the academia, so can we then say that the ivory tower researcher is gone for good? We're not anymore in somewhere in the tower shouting the, the truths and let other people do the dirty things. Or are we now going to these very entrepreneurial academics, whether we call them multitasking innovator, somebody who knows everything on anything and actually can do that in practice and then have the companies, the funding things and so forth. So that's really the balancing uh, um, question now that how do we perceive academics nowadays? Well, if we look at what we found out, uh, I wouldn't be that sharp, of course, uh, but it seems to be evident that uh, there's more diversification and multiplicity on how we perceive academic identities. And that's reality. We cannot anymore see academic as something that who can solely on concentrate on doing research and giving teaching based on that research. But we have to understand that 
there are more duties and tasks uh, when people work in the universities. Mm. So in a way we can say yes, the roles and the identities are polarized uh, and, and it's really a different kind of impression that you have if you are one of those losers or work overloaded. Uh, whereas if you are one of those winners or mobile careerists or change agents, they, agents, they have really a different meaning of, of what it is to be an academic. Um, so we, in, essentially we can say that we are moving uh, towards more hybrid and dynamic understanding of academic work, academic profession and academic identities. And this was also evident in, in these um, interviews that we did. In here you can say that this is a sort of traditional way of perceiving academic. I haven't really noticed these changes. I suppose it's all right. Well, we'll just carry on. I'm old enough to have seen so many different things come and go. They've, they've had very little impact on me. So this is sort of person who, well, been in academia for years and seen lots of changes, but says that this is part of the story. These come and goes, and well, they little have any impact on, on my everyday duties. But then we had more dynamic perception of the similar changes too. And it says that we got the crux, crux of matter straight away. We were the first to make headlines. From our point of view, this is really good thing. The overall status of natural sciences will increase now. We are going to be at the center of the key priority areas. So this is clearly somebody who believes in profiling and to feel that we are doing well in the competition. So this is the university that we like. It has to be hybrid. It has to be dynamic. Uh, but the way uh, we perceive the academic identities in these two studies, we have to say that it doesn't mean that it's an absolute representation of individual academics, but it's more about how academics tell the stories. And we know that the told stories doesn't always equal to reality. So this is sort of how people narrate their working environments, their working lives, uh, their academic identities. So in a way we can say that being an engaged innovator or traditional ivory tower researcher, it's just a story among others. Uh, and this is something that I would like to end my presentation saying that we have to be careful and cautious when we also make these stories of, of academic identities. I think I was given 20 minutes time and I think I'm pretty much done it. So thank you and I'm happy to have any questions from your part. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>